This is HighIntensityBusiness.com with Lawrence Neal, helping you achieve your health and fitness goals. Become a great personal trainer and build your high-intensity strength training business. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly. And I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all of the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and get $500 off install when you place an order, please go to arxfit.com and mention HIB, that's High Intensity Business, in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $500 off install when you place an order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter HIB in the How Did You Hear About Us field. Lauren Snell here and welcome back to highintensitybusiness.com. This is episode 265. Today's guest is Eric Feigl. Eric is the owner of Eric Feigl Personal Training based in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's helped individuals at all skill levels. He believes the basis of living a healthier lifestyle is to be as physically strong and mobile as possible. Eric helps people accomplish both of those goals by using evidence-based resistance training principles. Backed by Mission Fire Fitness, Cincinnati's most knowledgeable, professional, and respected private training facility, Eric has established himself as a go-to fitness professional. Although well-versed in a spectrum of knowledge, he specializes in kinesiology, which is just fancy speak for human movement, and exercise science as they relate to injury, prevention, strength development, fat loss, and performance. Eric, welcome to the show. Lawrence, thanks, man. Great to have you on and long time coming. You know, we've been obviously connected for ages. I was on your podcast, I think a couple of years ago now, I want to say maybe a year and a half yeah. ago. Um, and, uh, you know, we've never managed to get you on mine. So it's great to finally, to finally have you. Obviously, we've all got a little bit of extra time now. And so uh, we had like, some good opportunities and um, some space in the calendar to get that scheduled. Um, so I figured, you know, we would just start off talking about your story. Um, I, I'd love to hear, how did you first get into fitness? Sure. And I think just to back up, I think the last time we actually spoke, spoke was like maybe three years ago was, was when that podcast came out. Cause it was well before, uh, Kennedy was born. So it's been a long time. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah. How, how'd I get into fitness? I, um, I found it, I think kind of exercise and fitness a little later in life i played played sports um into high school was injured early in high school not that i not that i was you know very good or anything but you know i I didn't really exercise i think until or not exercise but like strength train and get into fitness until maybe i was probably a uh a senior in high school or even a, a freshman in college like really started to you know look at it for what it can do for me and, and really dig into it. And I probably got started just like everybody else did in, in all of the fitness magazines, men health and, and all that kind of stuff. Started learning some, some basic stuff. Uh, when I got into going into college, I, that, that's when I, I actually started to kind of get a, even more serious about the strength training part of things. And uh, I was still kind of playing athletics recreationally and I wanted to to be able to perform, you know, the, the best that I possibly could. And, you know, you start digging into all that kind of stuff and, and the sports philosophy behind a lot of stuff is just, and looking back on it now, it's just garbage. 
but um, they make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. But anyway, I when I got into freshman year of college, I was actually going to be a teacher, and I made it into I think you know my sophomore year of college, and I realized that I didn't really want to be a teacher. I didn't want to make lesson plans. I, you know, obviously, it's a very important career path and good for people who are doing it, but I wanted to I wanted to do something with with fitness. At that at that point, I started to get even more involved in in my own routines and things like that. So. Uh, where I went, Eastern Illinois University, there was athletic training. And athletic training is not the same uh, as like exercise science based principles and, and uh, things of that nature, but it was um, involved in athletics. And I think everybody who is getting into fitness, if they, if they kind of have an idea that they want to help people in the fitness area, they think I need to help athletes. Like the general population doesn't even exist or something. But like I automatically thought, I wish I want to be around athletes, I want to help athletes. Well, I made it about a semester into athletic training, and I decided that wrapping football players' feet is is not exactly the career path that I want to have. <laughs> Again, it's a very admirable profession. We definitely need those people out there, but there was just something about it that I didn't find very fulfilling. And so I just basically took a little sidestep into exercise science, not really knowing everything that was going to go into it and even what I could do with it on the outside. So going through exercise science, very little of it was geared towards fitness. I think we had a semester of fitness training and it was basically, you know, you do, you, you develop a workout plan and then you instruct one of your classmates through your workout and then you get graded on it by someone who probably has never, you know, worked with, with someone, you know, the, the instructor hasn't done that themselves. They just teach out of the book, which is fine. But, um, so I didn't really have much experience with with coaching or instructing or building exercise programs. I didn't really know what I was going to do when when I graduated with this degree. You know, I, it was more mostly clinical setting. They were getting you prepped for like a cardiac rehab position. You know, you have to go through uh, much more schooling for that. But that was kind of how the program was geared. They were going to get you going into some kind of clinical setting. And I knew I really didn't want to do that. And so I, I took my education one step further and just stuck around at Eastern Illinois for their master's program in kinesiology. And I'd like to say I did it because I thought it was going to help my career once I figured out what my career would be. But if I'm being totally honest, I just wasn't ready to graduate yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of thought, I just kind of thought, you know what, let's stick around in college for another year. It was a year program. I'll just barrel through. And then when I'm done, I'll have this advanced degree. It'll make me more valuable. And uh, we could talk about you know, the value of, of all of this later. But my first experience with, with personal training came after that. I, I spent in between um, my senior year of undergrad and grad school, I spent a summer internship at the YMCA in Edwardsville, Illinois. And they have – it's one of the largest um, at YMCA's in at least Illinois at the time. And they had a sports performance, a youth sports performance program. That's when I got my first taste of actual personal training. So I just, I basically observed these, um, these young athletes going through these programs and observed the coaches. And that's kind of when I thought, I mean, you know, I could, I, I'd like to do something like that. Again, I wasn't exposed to the general population. And then when I got out of grad school, I went back to the YMCA and then um, I did some part-time work there. And then I started building my personal training business on the side and at a company called uh, Dynamic Fitness Management. When I was hired at Dynamic Fitness Management, that's when I, I went all in on personal training and started to build my my one-on-one career. And then I kind of, you know, it's transitioned now. I'm no longer in Illinois. I no longer work for Dynamic Fitness Management. That was in 2007. but um, that's kind of how I got into fitness as a whole right? and how it fast, how it got me into uh, personal training. And I actually diverged from personal training for about two years, dynamic fitness management. Basically you worked with clients. So the club, the club that dynamic fitness management was inside of would bring you um, a member that just signed up and it was your job as a trainer to sell them packages, which everybody's very familiar with how that process works. I'm sure most people are. 
And if you're doing good enough on that side of things, they want to groom you to be a personal trainer director. But as a personal training director, uh, you get less training experience, less training time with clients, and you're doing more selling. And I didn't really have any interest in that. And at the time, personal training wasn't very big in the area that I lived in. So I started looking at other places. Um, and I, I ran across a company called Corporate Fitness Works. And they were in the uh, corporate wellness side of things. So I actually accepted a position as their assistant director and moved to Cincinnati. And then about a year into that position, um, which I didn't work with, I didn't work with one-on-one -on -one clients. I did exercise programs, taught group exercise classes. We put on health fairs for um, Humana Insurance, which is where the fitness center was uh, located inside of. And I, I got the itch to really start working with clients again. And that was probably in 2009. And uh, I came across a gym called The Workout at Adams Landing in Cincinnati. Met a guy named Joel Wayne Scott. I told him you know, a little bit about my background and what I wanted to do. And um, I started working there part time with a couple of clients in, in the early mornings and in, in the evenings. He approached me three months into working there. And he said, hey, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to open up my own space. He was part owner there, but he's like, I want to, he, had, he had some separation issues with uh, the owners, the other owners of that facility. He created a place that I train in now called Mission 5 Fitness. And I resigned from my corporate fitness um, job after I think I was there for two years, a little over two years. And I have been at Mission 5 Fitness as a, as a uh, fitness coach, fitness trainer since I guess that would be 2000. We opened the doors at 2011. And so uh, that's where I, I do all of my personal training and uh, work with uh, the general population. But you're, you have your own business, don't you? So you you just operate out of this, what you pay like a fee to use the facility. Is that how that works? That's correct. Yeah. So I operate Eric Feigl personal training out of Mission 5 Fitness. So we he has several trainers that work out of this one location and we all pay um, we all pay rent essentially to, to use that space. So if I wanted to, if I had the availability to go and train at another location part time or do in homes and things like that, I could be totally fine doing that. Um, but I, I don't. L luckily enough, I'm, I'm busy enough there that I don't I don't need to to travel around a bunch of different places. But everybody that trains at Mission 5 is their own business entity, but we're operating under the umbrella of Mission 5 Fitness. That's correct. Cool. Um, I want to just talk to you briefly about the podcast. I remember, obviously, we had a few mm -hmm. phone calls, exchanges, I think, around when we spoke on your podcast and for some time after that. Uh, just to talk about podcasting, really. And um, okay. I always really respected how um you were like not obsessed with the growth you were more about nah you know it's just the thing i have my own style um uh, but you you did you did kind of express a desire to uh, i think eventually do more in the way of like public speaking and then i was listening to one of your podcasts today and uh, i think it was one of your coronavirus chronicles and you were saying how you uh, had some speaking gigs scheduled i'm guessing I, I know those are all being affected right now but i'm just curious have you as has that sounds like it's been kind of successful for you the podcast in terms of helping you do more speaking gigs and things like that is that correct well kind of so so okay how how all of that came about my the, the podcast uh, i don't even know how long the podcast has actually been going on um four years five years something like that mm -hmm. it started the podcast started out just something fun. I had been listening to podcasts, you know, I think I started out listening to, to Rob Wolf's Paleo Solution podcast in 2009. And it, and it just hit me one day that like, hey, I could do something like this. Because I just wanted to talk, to, I just wanted to, to talk shop with people. Mm -hmm. I just love talking fitness. I love talking exercise. I like talking, you know, a, a lot of different topics. And if you listen to Fitness Candor podcast, you'll notice I have people um, all the way from the high intensity side of things into the collegiate setting of, of strength and conditioning. Um, there are fitness business entrepreneurs, there's teachers, there's all sorts of different people. And I just wanted to, to talk to people about what I enjoyed. I just wanted to learn some things. The whole public speaking side of things, which, which really hadn't even gotten off the, uh, the ground floor when, um, COVID-19 hit, I, 
I was doing some teaching at uh, Cincinnati uh, State Community College for the uh, personal training business program. And I, I realized that like teaching something that you're doing, you know, it, it isn't always transfer. I, I wasn't, mm -hmm. I, I found, if I'm being completely honest, I'm, I am, I wasn't that effective of a teacher. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say, but relaying information that I had experience with, I thought I was very good at, like, you know, opening a book and following a curriculum. Some of the things just, it's just not applicable. Once, once you get, it's just like all the, all the degrees and all the certifications and all that stuff as proud of them. Um, and as happy as I am that I, I went through all of that, none of that matters if you don't get experience, because then you realize that 80% of that stuff just goes out the door. You know, like I, you just don't use a lot of it in, in everyday settings. It's great to have the, the fundamental basics of, you know, biology and physiology and kinesiology, human movement. It's great to have that as, as a base, but that you shouldn't, you shouldn't just rely on all of that. Once you get the experience, that's what, that's what counts. And what I realize is when I'm going through all of these textbooks, I'm like throwing out half of it. I'm having to create basically my own outline. And um, I just, I realized that I don't think I was making the impact with students that I really wanted to. And uh, that's when I, I, I did that for two semesters. Then I passed that off to a good friend of mine, um, Cindy, who's, who's doing a great job with that same class. And then I started just telling people, like, I would love to talk to you and, and tell you about how to become a personal trainer. So I, I started doing more open mentorships wow. where I, I just started people who, people who, were interested young people coming up into personal training getting their foot getting their feet wet like i just want to tell them hey this is my experience here's what to do here's what not to do learn from my mistakes um and i i've reached out and i was part of the mentorship program in eastern illinois university and so i, I started mentoring a couple of uh people going into personal training that's where everything kind of grew so what in terms of like the public speaking just talking more about it what you're what you're talking about was I had a um, I was a guest speaker for uh, Northern Kentucky NKU Northern Kentucky University and it was to their junior and senior exercise science class so they were kind of in the exact same position I was not many knew what they were going to do with this degree they didn't really know what to do next they didn't most of them hadn't even really thought about personal training as a career so I was kind of like going in saying hey it is a viable option. And here's who you help. Here's what you do. Here's how you use your knowledge. You know, here's how much money you make. Here's where you can work. That that kind of thing. And I'm still very interested in sharing that that with people. Hmm. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely nailed it with um, the amount you learn just doing. You know, just being in the yeah. arena. In the arena, actually. Yeah. You know, actually experiencing it, and it just it just is fast tracks your learning significantly. Um, so no, I, I fully yeah. fully agree with that um so what no that's really interesting and um it's interesting just to see how things have kind of evolved for you and developed um well let's talk about now so you know we're in we're obviously in the shutdown um mm -hmm. as we were both talking offline um and on email we didn't want to talk about that too much because all the media people are getting right now is about that so let's give them a nice distraction from that for the most part if we can <laughs> um but I'm, i am curious though in how you have pivoted if at all i know you're it's interesting your 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 uh particular situation your um your wife is 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 working and uh she's working yeah. at home there and you're taking a lot of the um responsibility looking after your uh your baby um which which i really commend right. uh, but that's obviously hit your business so how are you feeling about that and how are you coping personally with all that change Okay, so this is going to be a really interesting topic because you were kind of directly part of this when, when all this first started. It was like week one or two, and you and I had an email exchange because I we had been trying to link up to do a podcast for so long, but mm. the time the time difference just couldn't match up. Because normally I would be with clients right now. It's about it's about nine thirty a.m. Eastern time, and uh, we just we couldn't link it up. So I was like, you know what? I could finally get on Lawrence's podcast and. <laughs> I, and uh, and so I shot you an email, and you know you kind of just asked me about the the whole virtual training thing, and I I at that point in time, so this is probably five weeks ago, maybe four four weeks ago, something like something that. Like that. Yeah. I had 
yeah, I hadn't really put much thought into it because I was still so shell shocked. So pivoting, I was just trying to get my ground, like the grounding. What, what am I going to do now? I, I thought, well, I'm home with Kennedy. My wife had already been working from home for two and a half years. Like her, her home base is at home anyway. So the biggest pivot for her was just having me and Kennedy home all the time because now we're not taking Kennedy to daycare. Excuse me. So, you know, when you, you had asked me, oh, you're not doing any online training. And I, and I hadn't really put that much thought into it to tell you the truth. And I had, I have this whole online thing set up, um, on a system called true coach. So I have a hundred plus videos of myself doing exercises that I actually use for a couple of people that are out of state, uh, former clients of mine who have moved, but still want to keep training. So I haven't really tried to open that part of the business up. It was kind of just sitting there. And then when you had asked me that, I'm like, you know, I don't really know if it's possible for me to do virtual training. So I consider like virtual training would be meeting someone on Zoom or Skype and then online training to, to me, which is, you know, it's like a, it's not very far away from each other. Online training would just be me sending a workout and someone doing, and then I'm tracking the progress along the way and just giving them feedback that way. So for me, I, I was kind of stuck in this place where I almost, I almost wanted to see where this whole thing was going to go before I started like getting people to go online or recruiting my own online, my own one-to-one clients and trying to get them on, uh, online for a couple different reasons. Number one, I didn't really know how hard to push it, how hard to sell it. You know, like it, it's kind of a weird thing because everybody's, tra- everybody's in such a different place. Some people lost their income. Some people became, you know, full-time babysitter, full, full-time nanny, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So I didn't want to throw it out there and just say, Hey, you know, let, let's jump online and, and let's just keep training. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want it to become a hassle because I knew other people had stress, like the other stressors going on, just like you and I do. And, and so when I started to put little feelers out there, I got some really good feedback. Some people are like, Hey, let's do the online thing where you just send me workouts. That's great. I can do it with my own convenience. Perfect. Um, and then one or two people reached out and, and said, I'd love to do virtual training. Let's do that. In fact, I did one this morning before our, our podcast. And, um, that's, a, that's a long way to say that I was in such a weird place and I was getting a little freaked out because I'd been off of social media for so long. And then when I got back on, cause there's a lot of downtime. So I flipped back on Instagram and there's all these people that you and I know, um, Owen Dockham, for instance, I reached out to him and I said, Hey man, it looks like you're doing a lot of online training, you know, uh, online coaching, virtual coaching. How'd you do it? You know, should I be doing it? Like I, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know what to do. He told me, look, man, you know, it's, it's not that many people, not everybody's going to, to jump on board. He's like, but the ones who do will see the value in it and you both of you will get something out of it. And so it kind of started the very next day. Uh, actually that was on a Saturday, the very next Monday I was doing my first uh, virtual training appointment and it's, it's been a really good move for me personally, just, just to, just to have the human connection and do what I like to do, get creative, um, you know, and just, uh, continue to have, a little more sense of purpose throughout the day, because as you know, it, it can be kind of the, the same thing over and over and over. So it's a nice break to the day also. Yeah. Routine and structure is so important right now. Um, right. As hard as that is with both of us having quite young children, it's <laughs> uh, difficult yeah. to have a, a schedule that you can actually stick to every day. But um, you're used to having that, right, with your business. Um, I'm used to having that. And so one of the things I noticed is when this first hit, it was like the first week or two was so chaotic. And then I sort of sat down and said, no, I have to have structure here. And so now I've got a a schedule in place. It's so unusual for me. It's like 5 to 8 a.m. work, you know, and then and then between 8 and like uh, 1 p.m., I'm like kind of doing errands. Maybe I work out. Maybe I look after the baby for a bit, give my fiance a break. And then I do kind of podcasts and any sort of recording from like one till four and that's sort of my work schedule but i'm usually at my best between like seven and eleven in the morning that's where i normally get like my best work (laughs) done so it's like it's like having to kind of reshape and restructure the schedule around the situation 
and just doing the best, you know, making the best of what you have. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I think you make a really good point. I, I think to everyone listening, if they haven't got routines, schedules, things you do, build build habits now for this specific scenario, and you'll get more out of the time, and you'll just feel happier, uh, more productive. And then obviously you can always adjust when things do eventually reopen. Um, but no, that's it's interesting hearing you talk about virtual training and your your view of it. I mean, I would have thought that your clients would be would need it uh, would have a great need for it because I know from what I remember you work with quite sort of busy professional target market if I'm right. Yeah, that's right. Correct. Yeah. So you know, if you think about it, like I don't know about you, but um, I'd say my my exercise and diet habits are on point the last few days but at the start of this whole thing i was slipping big you know on diet on i put on like five pounds like super quick um you know my workouts everything was slipping so if someone like me is slipping then i'm thinking the you know someone who's not as interested and motivated or or passionate about exercise and and diet is going to really fall off the wagon and so i think you're going to see really bad decline in people's health over this time so i think that they actually need you more than ever <laughs> it's, it's my frame of reference yeah maybe, yeah maybe so I, I do want to circle back to something you mentioned because if people out there are listening and they're still maybe not in a in a quote-unquote routine i think mm-hmm. one thing to really point out that you know you get for me like i get when i got on social media again i started kind of flipping through and i saw all of, all of these people that i follow sending out these virtual appointments, it kind of made me feel like I was a slacker, like I was not doing something that I should be doing. And and then I started kind of looking at my own schedule, like, man, I need to fill up all this time. But then I'm like, well, I've got Kennedy to look after. And I still want to be available for, for Melissa when she comes out. Like we're in a, such a unique position to have more time with our spouses because because I we her and I are away from each other so so often. Um, and same with Kennedy, you know, like you really think about it. During the day, I Melissa would bring her to daycare. I'd pick her up from daycare, but then we'd have like a you know a handful of hours, and then we'd all go to bed and wake up and repeat. So I wanted to make sure. the most out of that also, but I still wanted to. So basically, my my point is, forget about what everybody else is doing. Who cares? I mean, really, who cares? If you if if you're even if you're if you're a coach or trainer out there and you're not doing online training because it doesn't work for your schedule, good for you. You have to do like what's best for you in this very moment because we have no idea what's going to happen next. And so, you know, if 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 it feels like if you're just going to bog yourself down, then don't do it. You know, like minimize your stress as much as possible because I know right now, like being on schedule is a very good thing, especially for you know people like you and I who are used to being on a schedule. Like I need it. I need to get up at five. I got to work out at five thirty. Like I like having that routine, um, but. For some people, it, it might it might add more stress, and I think that kind of translates into what you were asking about the people that I work with. Yes, I think they do need it. They need it a lot, maybe maybe more now than ever. But I think it, you know, it was it was much more part of a routine of getting up, coming to see me, and then maybe getting a Starbucks on the way home, and then going home, and then starting their work day or however, however I fit into their day. But like now I, I don't, I'm not sure that they know where other things fit into their day. If that, if that makes sense. So I don't know, I don't know where they put me or their workouts in the priority list. If their schedule is upside down, I just, I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't speak for them. I wish I could. I wish I could reach out and just, you know, grab everybody and say, keep training. Like let, let's keep doing this. But what do you um, what do you have if you I, don't have your health? Yeah, I I completely agree, and that's that's one thing why I think it's important to keep in touch with those people. So every Monday I send out an email, and it's a very basic email. It's basically me touching base. Last week I sent out an email, and it was just a pre recorded video of me saying, "Hey guys, hope everything's going well." Um, and I kind of did like a it was a 60, 60 second video of just me saying hi and touching base. And then I sent that to them and I got a lot of good feedback from it. Um, and then this week I sent out just, you know, my, unfortunately my, my mother was, it has been impacted by COVID pretty closely at her work. So we're still kind of trying to figure out like where, like how that's going to play out. But I, I sent that out along with a, a pre-recorded workout 
of three exercises, very simple. And I sent that out to them. So, you know, I think just as a fitness professional right now, staying in touch with your, your clients, even if they're not responding all the time, even if they're not working with you one-on-one still, keeping in touch with them is just as smart as a business move as it is just a personal connection move. So, you know, there, there's yeah. still that to be said. Oh, I, I agree fully. I, I think nurturing your client base at this time is the right thing to do um, just from a goodwill perspective and with the, all the challenges people are going through, but also to protect your business. Um, yeah. Curious what you think about this. So, you know, obviously I'm, I operate quite heavily in the kind of online business, online marketing space. And I know, mm-hmm. I know of so many people that have been delivering some kind of virtual training or online coaching business for a long time. Uh, and they do it very well. They have a very well-oiled sort of online marketing machine. And I sometimes worry that the high intensity training industry that I care most about are being a little bit dare I say even dangerously naive to think that if they uh, don't talk to their clients and just wait till the lockdown ends and then reopen that they'll just start coming back in and training because I know that there's these businesses that I started talking about at the start of this um, this statement that that, that are going to be you know investing in traffic you know buying traffic right now is incredibly cheap because of what's happening in the market um, and they'll be right. targeting these people and they'll be re, they'll be building new habits it's all about habits as you know um, these people are building new habits with these online providers um, and I get, I'm concerned that when things do uh, do return to normal that actually they'd have built these new habits and they won't be interested in resuming in-person personal training what do you think about that do you do you agree do you disagree what's your, what's your thoughts around that exactly i'm 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 right in the middle i don't disagree or agree i mm. i think you have a very good point but I, I tell you what man there are people still even with even with all of the gyms in our area being shut down there are still people reaching out for personal training they they want they still want it i'm on a service called thumbtack have you ever heard of thumbtack i have not no Okay. So it's basically like a professional Craigslist meets Angie's list. So me as I don't, I don't want to go too much into it, but I can put my services out there as a personal trainer. And then if someone is looking for specific things that I offer, Thumbtack will send me an email saying, you know, Joe Schmo is looking for personal training. I can send a bid in along with other people. And then that, that person looking for the, that the person looking for the service can pick who they want to work with. So. I, uh, I'm still getting requests for personal training in the area, even though all gyms are shut down. So in person, so I, like at their homes or something like that? Or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't, I haven't responded to any because I, it's, you know, I, I'm not going to go anywhere right now. So here's where my, my, my brain splits. Yes, we're going, I'm, I'm already convinced that out of the 40 people that I work with a handful, I won't see again. I'm, I'm convinced of that and I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. Because when this reopens, I don't think I don't think everybody's going to transition to stay online. I think a lot of people are going to want to get back to their their regular schedule. They they want yeah. normalcy. So a lot of people are going to come back. It might not be right. In fact, it won't be right away. Like the older clients are going to be real hesitant to come back to a high traffic area. I totally get it. Their space is going to be waiting for them because I'm keeping in contact with them. But then there are going to be some spots that I'm going to need to fill that I know that people who right now who have their, like their home gym set up or maybe who who didn't get on the ball and get any resistance bands or you know dumbbells or barbells and, and racks set up in their house, they're craving that and they want to get back to working with someone. So yes, there's going to be um, a downtick in the business that it, that we already had, but I think there's going to be a huge uptick for people looking for those services. I think we're going to we're going to be real surprised at at how big of a a swing we're going to see in new in new clients altogether. So sorry, you think that come when things return to normal, see that there'll be an uptick in people who are trying to improve their health, but and they'll be willing to come in to to personal training studios. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I'm going to see a lot. I, I think I'm just going to throw it out there. I'll see eighty percent of my current uh, base come back to me eventually. It might not be all at once. Let's say twenty percent just drop off, and I never see them again because of whatever reason. I don't, 
I, I'm not going to worry about that 20% drop off necessarily, especially if I've been in contact with people, if I'm, if I'm trying to make, you know, outreaches because ultimately just like getting to the gym, just like getting to see me, they have to make the decision to stay in contact with me or the professional also. Yeah. So it, it really is a two way street. We can put out the best content. We can put out all of this information. We can call, we can text, but if they, if they really, if it's not in their forefront, then you know, it's just not in the forefront, but there are going to be other people out there that we have the opportunity to help and to work with. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that's going to happen when everything resumes to whatever normal looks like. I think we're going to see an uptick in, in potential new business. You know, you're a, you're a, an interesting case study for people because you've, you've kind of, correct if I'm wrong, Eric, but the kind of business you've created is a, it's almost like a nice lifestyle business. You have around four, well, obviously pre-crisis and all of that, um, around 40 clients, you're the trainer. Mm-hmm. So they, they only train with you. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of, you've always seemed to be seemed from where I'm standing to be quite happy with that sort of business model. And you've not necessarily yeah. wanted to scale beyond that. You've already said on this podcast, how you're passionate about the training. Like you didn't want to progress into a personal training director. You wanted to just focus on the training and training people. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, ARX. Are you looking to create a cutting edge, high intensity training facility? Are you confused on what equipment to use or how to separate yourself from the masses? Well, then ARX Fit might be the answer you're looking for. I asked Mike Palano from ARX a few questions about how ARX machines are challenging the status quo of the exercise industry around the globe. Mike, if you could, Give the listeners a quick summary of why ARX is so different from the traditional machines or tools they're used to seeing in most exercise facilities. ARX is totally different than anything you've seen before. This isn't just another weight stack machine. We've looked at the last 40 years of exercise technology and used that knowledge to create something entirely new. ARX uses a new form of resistance, a motor, and we pair that motor with computer software so that we can maximize the safety, effectiveness, and efficiency of your workouts. So you may be asking, okay, but how does ARX compare to weights? Traditional machines you see in gyms today are based on lifting metal weights and battling gravity. What people don't realize is that when you're forced to lift a static weight like this, one that doesn't adapt or change while you use it, you're underloading yourself rep after rep. And this unnecessarily limits your ability to make improvements. With ARX, we've taken a totally different approach. We removed weights and gravity from the equation altogether. Instead, ARX combines our patented motorized resistance with our custom computer software to provide you with the world's safest, most effective, and most quantified form of resistance training ever. When you train with ARX, you are training to your perfect level of resistance, both positively and negatively 100% of the time. No more guessing what weight to use, ARX does all of that for you, instantly and automatically. We'll also track and measure every second of every rep, so you can quantify all of your workouts to find out if you're improving and by exactly how much. Whether your goals are bigger muscles, increased strength, stronger bones, or just to look good in a bathing suit, ARX can help you achieve all of these and more, but do so in a fraction of the time it would take compared to traditional equipment. If you're looking for the most efficient, most effective, and most quantified piece of exercise equipment on the market today, then look no further than ARX. Thanks, Mike. That all sounds really impressive. If you'd like to learn more about ARX, visit arxfit.com and mention that you heard about ARX on the High Intensity Business Podcast to receive an exclusive deal of $500 of shipping and installation of your ARX machines. With that said, I'm just curious, you know, when you get a view on when things will return to normal, how have you thought about your own strategy? So if we could call that like a recovery strategy so that when the doors open, you've got the best chance of um, bringing as many of your original clients back as possible or attracting new ones. Yeah, so that's, that's a really good question. And I, I think you're right. I think I'm maybe I'm in a different position um, since I'm you know, I, I don't get a paycheck from, from my gym. I get directly from my clients. So, you know, and, and I'm a part owner in a, in a, 
in a membership based gym. It's a 16,000 square foot gym. That's also completely shut down. Um, so I, you know, I see kind of the ownership side, not as much. I'm, I do some back end stuff for that place, but you know, I, I see Joel, he's, he, he's the owner of mission five fitness and the, and the majority owner of balance fitness. He, he is really impacted because he still has rent to pay on that building, which I'm sure he's yeah. worked out with that, with that, uh, the landlord. But so if you're in that position, that that's a totally different scope uh, to, to look at things. But for me, I think when, when it's, when it is time, my plan right now is so, you know, our governor comes back and says, okay, we're going to let, you know, these high traffic areas go back to business my my main concern is to relay that information to my clients to make sure they they've heard it and then i'm going to resume my business hours as normal because hopefully a lot of those people are going to come back and fall right back into their slots i'm going to assume that that's not going to happen okay so i don't want to necessarily in the first couple of weeks try to fill people's spots with with new business i want to give my current my current client base an opportunity to come back so a letting them know that I'm I'm returning to business and then be there for appointments and then when people start to to trickle back in just making sure they're comfortable making sure that they that they know that um you know their spots still currently available and we're going to jump right back in hopefully like nothing's happened even though it's going to be a little bit of a decline and then when when it comes time let's just say it's a month into the process and I haven't heard from some people then I'm going to jump back on on places like Thumbtack, um, and start to recruit new new potential clients, and then start sending out referral notices to people, and just and to, to my current clients, and just letting people know that hey, I, I I do have time to fill, I have spots available, I have opportunity to help more people, and and go from there. And this is going to mean a, a change in my. I had a to what you said earlier. I had a really nice schedule. I was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, 5 30 a.m. to 1 30 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5 to 11. Then I had like one afternoon client. And then Saturday, I worked from 8 to 12. Like that was, that's great for me. That's perfect for me. You know, that Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I'm probably going to have to open up some later afternoon times to, to start accommodating new business. And, and, uh, so a lot of things are going to have to adjust on my end also. Um, but you know, you make plans now and then God lasts later. Right. So who knows if, if, if all that's going to work in, in the next couple of months, but that's kind of the plan attack. Now I'm going to focus on, I focus on the people who are going to come back to me. I'm going to get them up and rolling again. And then maybe in, in a month or so after that, we'll kind of see where, where everybody lands. You, you seem very calm, which is, uh, which is interesting. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, no, you, you do. And, um, you're, you know, you know, and what I mean by that is, um, you don't seem too concerned. You, 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 you accept that there will be a worst case scenario. Like you accept that there will be, uh, that there will be negative things happen, but you're, by, by kind of accepting it, you're kind of then figuring, okay, what am I going to do? And it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, but I'm going to ask you a really personal question. Now. You don't have to answer it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Like you just don't seem okay. that concerned on this podcast about finances. Like you're, you've just lost, mm. right? Your 40 personal, well, not all of them. Obviously you're doing online coaching and virtual training and stuff, but you've, you've lost yeah. obviously a lot of revenue there. Um, mm -hmm. and obviously yeah. when you go back, you're, uh, you might, you know, it might take you a while to, to rebuild that revenue stream. Um, have you, have you been able yeah. to sort of like save a lot of money or does your wife a millionaire? Yeah. Like what's, you know, if you, if you don't mind, <laughs> if, <laughs> like I, I'm just, um, you just seem so calm about this. Maybe that's just your, your you know, uh, your maturity, but I'm just, just curious. No, I think, um, well, well, thanks. I guess I didn't really thought about, <laughs> like, thought about myself being a calm person, but no, I, we have saved, we saved a lot. And I think, uh, that's really, that's really benefited us. And I think that's, you know, to speak to that a little bit, unfortunately, that's not taught to you as a, as a trainer, you know, just like saving for retirement, just like saving for, um, health insurance and, and moments like this, even, even though nobody could, you know, the worst thing that could, I thought could have happened is I could break my leg or break a limb and be out for a couple of weeks and then get back to training. You know what I mean? So I need to have a backup plan for that. 
but in terms of the finance thing, fortunately, you know, my wife is still working. She has a very, um, a very good job, uh, has been with the company for 11 years what in, in the do? corporate world. So, well, so far? Uh, she works for, she works for Humana Insurance. So she's on the development side of Humana Insurance. And right now she's part of a COVID team that's keeping her extra, extra busy. Okay. But, um, but in terms of like, yeah, so I, luckily I have been able to save quite a bit. Her and I have both been, both been uh, very good savers over the past, uh, especially since we've been married. But, um, so yeah, so no, we're not millionaires. Yes. We're fortunate <laughs> to have, yes, we're fortunate to be sitting on a very, uh, a comfortable padding. Uh, if this goes into months and months and months, I think we, we will be okay. Another thing though, is, you know, this, this little, uh, this tiny little streamline of online training, you know, is giving me just enough to where it, it can offset, like maybe we could put that money towards our mortgage or something where we don't have to dip mm-hmm. into savings. So, so that's very good. But I think that that's your question speaks to what's not being talked about in personal training. When people get into personal training, people talk about billing, pe- people talk about how to get clients, how to make money. People aren't talking about how to save money. And you really need to have this plan, you know, 20 to 30 percent or what, whatever that goal is. It should all be written down somewhere. And you have this uh, this flow of where this money is going to go. Have you, you don't know where it's going Sorry, cut you off. Uh, no, I haven't. Hmm. I haven't I haven't actually read it either. Uh, I keep meaning to, but I just brought it up in case you had. Cause it's all about that. It's all about. And the there's a chap who I had on the podcast. I think his name is John Briggs, I want to say, um, who wrote the Profit First version for micro gyms. It's very relevant to us. So and it's yeah. all about it. it's all about money management and saving and uh, you know paying yourself and all those kinds of things. So yeah, sorry, exactly. I, I cut you off, but please please resume. No, that's you're you're right on you're right on target. That doesn't get it doesn't get discussed enough unless you're looking for it, you know? So, and another thing about the whole, um, being calm, just accepting it. I think, I think that's just part of business. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. I think, I think it helps me stay calm and not freak out knowing that some people might just not come back. And, and I'm, and I am okay with that. I just, I, I'm not sure. I don't know where that comes from, but I, I think that, I think that is a good benefit. If you just, if you, if you sit down, you know, you draw out your, your client list, I'm sure all, everybody out there listening, who's a trainer or a coach could, could look and see, okay, these people are very dedicated. They've only missed in a quarter. They've missed one or two appointments in a quarter there. And they were because they were sick or they're out of time for business. And then I look over here on these people who have missed, you know, in a quarter, they've missed 12, 12, uh, training sessions in a quarter. You know, like those people probably, you're probably not going to see them right away or if at all. And, and honestly, I, I think I've done that where I, I've seen, um, I've looked at my client list and I'm like, Hey, look, I know I've got these people coming back guaranteed. This is going to be great. Some of these people are going to trickle in a little slower. These people over here, might not be the most dedicated. They don't take it as seriously. You know, it's just more of a convenient for a convenience for them to have. I might not see them again. I, I just, I, I think rather than trying to hang on, even though it is easier to keep your current business, rather than trying to hang on in in this climate that we're in, it's okay to let some things go. And not that I'm not keeping t- contact with those people, but you know, we as coaches and trainers, we can't want it for the person more than they want it for themselves. And I think that's maybe a little bit where it comes from. Mm. I love that. I don't know if that seems seems cold. Maybe that seems cold. No, at all. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. You just come across very stoic. You, you, you've, oh. you've been in, you've been in the arena for a long time, right? You, 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 you come across like you're very confident, uh, at, running your business the way it is and yeah. you know that if you needed to you could rebuild aspects of it um and i think yeah. you've just given everyone a great exercise what you said there in terms of writing down like okay look at my existing client base understand their frequency over the last six months six to twelve months um and that literally mm-hmm. plan out the worst case scenario and contingency plan for that um i think that's and i think that's perhaps one of the reasons why you're well why you're coming across as karma because uh, you've actually done the hard thinking rather than just put it aside um and uh there was something else i was going to say but it's uh it's completely 
gone from my brain. Uh, maybe it'll come back later. Who knows? Uh, but is that a fair, a fair, afraid, a fair assessment? From do you think? Like I, you seem, you seem to have like you know when I say stoic, I mean you have you've accepted the things that you can't control, and you're focusing on the things that you can, and that is a key mindset right now. I think so. Yeah, and I appreciate that insight too. And I, you know why? Because I think when I, I'm not trying to blame social media, but that's where most people get their information from. And I, I think when, when especially if you're a young trainer or coach in the industry and you're looking at what everybody else is doing and maybe it's not working the exact same for you, like it's okay. It's okay that, you know, you haven't got it figured out and it's not nailed down because especially in America, it's like, you know, more, more, more all the time, constant, constant growth, you know, do more. (laughs) And it just, and, and I, I understand that in terms of like your work ethic, you know, but I don't think, but I think it's okay to to just take a step back, take a breather, and realize that you know it, maybe you're maybe you're not you might not be in this industry when all this is back to normal. Maybe you have to take a part time job someplace else while you build your build your business back up. Fine, you know if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. I just think like taking taking your current position and where you are and really accepting that everything is not perfect and not ideal and and growing later on you're just gonna have to take 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 things a step at a time and that's just it's just it, you're just gonna have to do it i mean it's gonna be a lot different than when you're started out and you're you know you're coming in at 5 a.m 5 to 6 and you have to come in 11 to 12 and then from 7 to 8 p.m like it's a different mindset there's something exciting about that because you're building something up the rebuilding process is something that not many of us is is uh you know our experience with so it could be scary but it will uh, it will forge better business people, better entrepreneurs. It will make it sounds cliche, but you Americans love a bit of cheese. I'm sure you won't mind me saying um, <laughs> that that it will it will make us all better at what we do. Um, yeah. You know, go, like Lucas said this on my podcast, like going through this stuff, going through 9/11, going through. Uh, I don't know all the other terrible things that we've been through. Um, I say terrible things. We've not. I personally have not been through many terrible That's, things. But you know, you know what I mean. Makes makes yeah, you I a do. better, a more more uh, robust and just more effective business person, human being. Don't, not necessarily just business person, just human being. Just more resilient. Um, you said it mm. great. At, you said it best at the start of this. You know, enjoy this time um with the family like i i know i came across very robotic earlier like this is my schedule but i am i, I, <laughs> no. I am i am absolutely um embracing the the quality time i have with with ash and my son as well it's it's quite special um i was curious have you read yeah. uh, small giants the book small giants is that familiar to you i have I have it. Can I make a comment really quick before i lose sure. my train of thought go for it go for it okay so just to go along with like you know I think right now there's two there's two trains of thought. Like you either have to, you know, hey, sit back and relax and enjoy this time and it it'll be okay when it's over. And then there's this other time like if you're not creating a roadmap to get shit done in your life, then you know, you're missing this opportunity. Like I don't think it's black or white. It's not binary. It's not one or the other. Like it's okay to one day wake up and be like holy crap, like what what am I doing right now? And then to wake up the next morning, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna get outside and I'm gonna go enjoy, you know, the sun. I'm gonna go enjoy playing with my dog or my kid, or you know, have extra time with my wife, or learn learn a new hobby. That's fine. And it's okay to to sit on your butt and like wallow for a little bit. I don't care what people think about me saying that, but it it it's okay. I agree. I mean, there, there doesn't have you don't. I don't think you have to be on one side or the other, you know, just because you're not like branching out and starting five new businesses and learning how to, you know, tie a fisherman's knot and learning a new skill. It doesn't mean you're, it doesn't mean you're super lazy. And just because you're super lazy doesn't mean you can't not super lazy, but just because you're in a funk right now, it doesn't mean you can't get out of it and just find what's right for you. So, okay, I'll, I'll let that go. But no, that um, was great. What? No, the, the book that you mentioned. Yeah, I just thought it would uh, small giants would resonate with you because it's not. It's all about businesses that decided not to continue growing, 
but instead focus on just building like a really great business and having a great product and a great uh, staff and just having a, a really positive impact on the local community. And it's a lovely read because um, it just changes the perspective on why we get into business in the first place. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily about just growing as right. big as possible. So I thought that would really, you'd enjoy that. It'd be uh, on your, your page, I think. Um, excuse the pun. Well, it is, it is. No. <laughs> Well, it is now. I just, I just, I just pulled it up. So I, I appreciate that. It's good. Oh, you're welcome, um, Eric. I know you need to vacate soon, so I do want to ask you one final yeah. question. And we definitely do a part two to talk about training philosophy because um, I know you we're both interested in doing that. Um, yes, I have all the podcasts you've done. I'd love to hear mm -hmm. your favorite podcast of all time from your own roster. Oh man, of all time. <laughs> Um, I should have probably gave you know, a heads up on that one so you could think about it, maybe. No, 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 no. The first one that popped in mind was uh, uh, Wes Wainscott. Yeah. I mean, I, I, he's Wayne Westcott. It, 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 yeah, Wayne Westcott, and that's that's, you know, I, I think that you, um, you actually, that's how you and I got connected. I think you heard that podcast, and you had mentioned uh, Fitness Canada. That's how you and I got linked up. But, you know, I, I have been reading his information since grad school or maybe even undergrad. And so I and it's so simple. It's, you know, it's basic strength training. Here's how here's how to do it. Here's the studies. And I just like him. He's so easy to talk to. He's so kind. He's so generous and he's insanely intelligent and he keeps things simple, which is uh, a, a huge benefit. Yeah. So if people haven't uh which I'm sure most people listening to this podcast, they they know of Wayne Westcott. So, I uh, I really hope that people, yeah, people people reach out for that. Yeah, but your your he's, particular he's got, your particular podcast was very good because if I remember, I mean, this is a long time ago now. I'm really reaching back into the 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 recess of my brain, but if I remember, you, you just went through the real basics, like you really just broke down kind of fundamentals of strength training and i i think i talked about it on my podcast with wayne as like listen to this yeah. to get like an introduction first and then listen to mine like to try and give it some kind of like order but no i, I thought it was yep. excellent so um we'll stick it in the, the show notes for this one so people can um perfect that one out um what is the best way for people to find out more about you eric where should we send them Sure. Yeah. Check the uh, easiest way if you just want to chit chat and talk about talk shop is my email, eric at ericfeigl.com. That's F as in Frank, E I G L. Um, all of my social media is at Eric Feigl, all together, no underscore, no punctuation. Um, and then my website also, ericfeigl.com. And the Fitness Candor podcast is out there on all platforms also. Awesome. Um, and thanks for joining me today, mate. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I appreciate you bringing some sort of sobering tone to the situation. Uh, I think people are going to listen to this, people who are, you know, business owners, studio owners, um, who are obviously in, in, in a lot of uh, cases in very challenging positions because they do have rents to pay, um, or, or kind of trainers like yourself who um, might, might uh, you know, uh, rent someone else's studio and but they're still in a difficult position because they can't train their clients in the ordinary way uh, i think it's, it's just a nice perspective you've given on how to cope with the situation how to think about it um and and how to uh to make the most of it so i appreciate you coming on the show today mate it's been uh, it's been very productive all right thanks for thanks for having me and let me vent a little bit <laughs> i appreciate it thanks lauren you're welcome. And uh, for everyone listening, to find the blog post for this episode and download the PDF transcript, please go to highintensitybusiness.com and search for episode number 265. And until next time, thank you very much for listening. Discover how to achieve your health and fitness goals. Become a great personal trainer. And build a successful high-intensity training business. Check out highintensitybusiness.com. Highintensitybusiness.com. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. 
I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly. And I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all of the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and get $500 off install when you place an order, please go to arxfit.com and mention HIB, that's High Intensity Business, in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $500 off install when you place an order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter HIB in the How Did You Hear About Us field.